Hey everybody, in this video we'll be giving you our review of Unearth by Brotherwise Games. Whee! So this is a game that we picked up at last year's Gen Con uh, well, 2017. Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. So yeah. Um, and uh, this kind of became one of our favorite games right away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a two to four player game that was a big draw for us um, because then both of us can play it, but we can also play it when we have friends over. And it, in fact, it was the first game that we played with Pierce and Alyssa, our friend. Uh, they are in your D&D game and Sorcerer Blob, and you can go and follow them there. Uh, yeah, this was the first thing that we played together in the hotel bar at the Marriott or something like that. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, we took over two tables and we're like, we're here for an hour and a half, and they were fine. It was cool. So what drew me to uh, Unearth, I'd heard kind of a lot about it before Gen Con. I went, picked it up, got to have the creators of the game sign it. That was really cool. But the premise is that you are unearthing these uh, ancient relics and wonders. Uh, to do that, you roll dice and you place your dice on these cards. And once you reach the number on the card or higher, adding up all the dice, the die with the highest value showing, that player gets the card. Yeah, so it's kind of a worker placement. Your dice are your worker. And, and it's also worth noting that, um, okay, so there's lots of different types of dice. You've got the D6s and D4s and D8s and all that. A, D, uh, a four on a D6 is worth more than a four on a D4. So if we were both on it, mm -hmm. if the card was worth eight, and you put down a D6 with a four, and I put a D4 with a four, you would get the card because the, the die was a bigger die since they were showing. But one thing that I do like about the game, and it can factor into your strategy, is if you don't get the card, and, and you're collecting the cards to try to get points and make suits and things mm -hmm. like that. If you don't get the card, you get yes. dweller cards. And so those, are the th those cards let you do different things, like add and subtract a total on a die, or roll your dice first and then choose where to place it. This isn't really kind of a how-to, so all of that'll make sense if you pick up the game, which I really suggest you do. But I like that you kind of get a consolidation prize Mm -hmm. And if you have multiple dice on that card, you get multiple cards, uh, the Dweller cards. And I think that that's a really cool mechanic, and it can factor into your um, into your strategy. Also, um, you are building these rings out of these little hexagons. Mm -hmm. uh, you get those when you roll a certain number on the die, and you blind draw them. So that adds another element of there's a little bit of strategy there, because... Um, sometimes I will choose to roll like a d4 mm -hmm. because there's a higher chance that I'll roll a lower number which will allow me to pull from the bag. Yeah. But I still have that chance element of I could roll a 4 on the d4 and I don't get to draw it. Or I could draw a color that I don't necessarily want. And once you place the hexagon, you can't move it around. Yeah, there's definite planning in your placement. You, you've you got the little hex tiles and you're building rings, and so you can have them going off on all these different directions. When you complete a ring, you can place a wonder, and if you complete special rings like three blue and three red, then you can get um, a wonder that's uh, more powerful or worth mm -hmm. more points or gives you an ability. Uh, there's a lot of strategy to the game, but when you factor in that you're rolling dice and you're blindly drawing the hexes from a bag, there's a really good amount of randomness to this. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I love is that you can't really... It's, it's not a game where you can figure out, oh, this is how you win this game. Yeah. And it's not a game that's so random that there's no strategy and it's well, I guess I might get lucky and win this time. Um, it's a really good blend of both. It's a, it's a game that I really solidly come in second place a lot, <laughs> even when it's just the two of us play. <laughs> I tend to win games. <laughs> so this is a game that we've introduced to a lot of our mm -hmm. friends and family. Uh, we introduced it to my parents, and they picked it up, and sometimes uh, my parents don't always pick up super complex games very quickly. Uh, I will say, I think the first time playing through the game, you, it is very much you're really learning and can't yeah. really figure out the strategy. So the second game is much better than the first. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, the game is great because it passes the mother-in-law test. Like, you can bring it to events and people can learn it. But yeah, you know, as much as this is one of my favorite games on our shelf, um, you know, it's not a quick game. Uh, and so if you're looking for something really fast or you don't like, you don't like longer games, um, you know, the two-player game takes about 45 minutes. And then the four-player game takes maybe 30 minutes, but it feels like you never really get to enact your strategy. Yeah, usually by the time, um, so as you flip the cards, there uh, are different end of days cards. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's nice. It adds a variety to the game. It's not the same every time. But it, in a four player game, it always feels like you reach that end of days card sooner than you want to. Yeah, yeah. Three players, I think, is really kind of ideal. Mm hmm. Um, and like you were saying, yeah, like the first time you play this game, you're not really playing the game. So unless you want to invest 45 minutes learning the game and then turn right around and play it for real, which to be fair, I think we did when Piers and Alyssa showed up, um, it's a little bit longer to play. That's not a bad thing for us, but, um, and you know, you only have to do that once. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I think it's a 45 minute game is a pretty good amount of time for a game. Sure. Like, it's, there are definite games that's like, this is a three-hour time commitment. Um, this is something that's really easy to pull out for a game night where you want to play a couple of different games. Or, hey, we've got about an hour before dinner is going to be ready. Let's pull out this game and play it while we wait. One of the things I love about it is the artwork. It's really cool, isometric, minimalist art. If you like the artwork in games like Transistor or Fez, even Journey to a certain extent, if you like that kind of artwork, you're really gonna like the artwork that's in there. It's it's done really nicely. It's really pretty, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We absolutely would recommend picking mm -hmm. up Unearth for your gaming collection. Go check it out, it's by Brotherwise Games. I wanna say a huge thank you. If this is your first time here, then all of the other videos, I have a giant beard, so be ready for that. Thanks for coming by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you really like what we do and you want to help us have more videos and higher quality videos and more games to play and cons to go to and all of that fun stuff, then you can head over to patreon.com slash rollforinitiative. Find a level that's good for you as one of our patrons. That would be really cool of you. And speaking of that, we want to say thanks to Lainey, Arvi, Bryce, and Joan, and all of the rest of our patrons. Yep, absolutely. So until next time, I'm Ryan. I'm Dawn. And this is Roll for Initiative. Bye. Bye. One of the things that I like. So what? <laughs> what was that word? Yeah.